Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Dear authors and invited guests, welcome to technical session 3B. Myself, Ayush Kar, and this session would be moderated by me. On behalf of Global Knowledge Research Foundation, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to the 8th International Conference on Information and Communication Technology for Competitive Strategies, ICTCS 2023, Jaipur, India. The 8th edition of the conference is being organized in a hybrid mode. The physical event is organized today in Jaipur, India, and the virtual event is being held through Zoom today and tomorrow, that is 8th and 9th December 2023. I hope you will enjoy the knowledgeable and interactive session through the day. In this session, we have 10 presentations. Each presenter will be given 8 minutes for the presentation and 2 minutes for the question and answer. On the 7th minute, I will raise a gentle reminder. There is another request to all the participants that you all stay connected with us till the closing remarks. If you have any query or update, then you can write it to me in the chat box. Just before we start the session, I would like to introduce you all to the chair of this session, Dr. Shyan Chakrabarti. Uh, he is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Techno International New Town, Kolkata, West Bengal, India. His research area includes medical image processing, a uh, nature-inspired algorithm and machine learning-based application. He has about 65 research papers published in international journal, book chapter, and conferences on various topics such as optimization, artificial intelligence, pattern recognition, and digital image processing. Uh, so I welcome you. If you want to introduce yourself, you are open to do so for one minute. Uh, hello, Ayush. Uh, I hope you are doing well. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, let's begin the session without uh, further delay. Right? Oh, oh. Let's welcome uh, our first presenter, Takshi Shukla, to present her paper on a review on machine learning methods in smart healthcare system. You may please start your presentation. Good, good, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good, at, good afternoon to all of you. Myself, Sakshi Shukla. I'm a research scholar from Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research, Chennai. Uh, to, uh, first, uh, I thanks to ICTCS uh, uh, to giving me opportunity to presenting my review paper. Today, my paper uh, paper is uh, uh, re a review of uh, uh, review on machine learning method in the smart healthcare system. Um, This is the, uh, in this uh, already, the concept of the developing and the IoT network of the healthcare application is one of the potential to improve the patient care. This, is, this review is helpful for the uh, all things, um, for uh, doctors, uh, diagnostic uh, um, treatment, everything. Uh, the, the, this reviews will be, uh, this paper will be helpful for all uh, healthcare system. Um, this paper, this this paper is um uh, this purpose is future research activity to uh, investigation would act to a uh, baseline study in order to uh, better understanding uh, the role that is the Internet of Things. Mm, uh, the in, uh, next slide is the introduction. In introduction, sir, uh, the medical area, the medical area, um is a one of the which artificial intelligence can be applied in variant of uh, context due to the facts of uh, fact that the I, uh, ai based approach not only for that uh, treatment of patient uh, but uh, um, uh, also the healthcare professional uh, in diagnosis on preventing a, uh, preventing care and the second thing sir uh, this uh, data will be stored Patient data will be stored, um, uh, consistent, uh, um, um, transmitting, understanding manner, and uh, uh, thus uh, um, kept in the proper manner. Thus, uh, anywhere, anyone who can be uh, uh, take the data and re retrieve the data and uh, uh, do according to that. Uh, that is very helpful for the doctor also. That is very helpful for the patient also. 
my aim is that sir, um, uh, in the India is in rural uh, area. Uh, many places are the diseases is increases very uh, uh, in implementation of the chronical diseases screening uh, currently lacking of the all reasons in India. So um, enhancing and increasing the surv uh, uh, survival uh, rate uh, to trust in uh, trust in the healthcare system. Uh, this is very helpful. Uh, the major goal of my purpose is uh, designing a diseases diagnosis model for using the AI and IoT conversion techniques. My scope is that the, uh, the detected, uh, this detected the uh, decision, this is diagnosis, um, builds a model. And the uh, second thing is that uh, advanced builds a model is used for the disease diagnosis to uh, increase the, enhance the diagnosis speed, accuracy, and re uh, reliability. And after that, uh, uh, after that, after we diagnosis, after the uh, uh, we the data will be stored in the cloud uh, with the help of the database scan um, uh, algorithm. Uh, that is a literature survey. In literature survey, uh, is many um, many paper will be done with this related to the healthcare. Uh, or IoT IoT healthcare is many that is also useful for. Uh, patient and uh, doctor uh, both both area monitoring how to billing the how to delay the billing hospital billing how to increase the efficiency for diagnosis the um, uh, diagnosis the diseases everything will be already that is a literature survey sir and this is a um, uh, developing the pri privacy aware as health access the control system address two major issues um uh, two major issues currently uh, system issues uh, are towards first healthcare data and expose and the uh, second is the most attitude size limited uh, the linear increase the public uh, publicly attitude attributes uh, many uh, algorithms on machine learning are used in the machine uh, in the previous papers uh, this all uh, this is all the um, uh, all the this uh, algorithm are used here, sir. But um, for uh, uh, diagnosis, for diagnose the diseases. Uh, my research gap is this: uh, the research has been carried out the math mathematical fashion. That goal is the assist uh, assisting reader to accurate accurate information of the earlier researcher that have been the carried out in the field of the heart failure and risk identification. And the second is the with the help of the bidirectional LTMS, uh, um, LTMS that researcher will be um, diagnose the diseases. Uh, uh, my my purpose of this uh, uh, my purpose of uh, this uh, paper is that first I is take uh, retrieve the data after the pre processing means um, unwanted data we uh, we reduce then after. I, I apply the PCA algorithm for uh, re reduce the dimension and complexity of the data of the complete um, uh, data. After that, I applied for the Wilson model and hyper model for the disease diagnosis. After that, uh, after the disease diagnosis, I uh, up, um, optimize the day optim uh, for optimal for finding the successful optimal solution. I apply for the ABA optimizer. After that, I compare uh, CSO and CLSM STM model uh, and Bilsam, Bilsam model. CLSO STM model is a previous literature survey model. Um, and the Bilsam model, according to me, I uh, uh, for good efficiency and good uh, no comp uh, less complexity. And uh, that I uh, I take uh, in with the help of the Bilsa model. So I compare these two models, then I save the data and uh, with the help of the DB scan algorithm, I save the data in the cloud. Um, uh, that is my proposed work, sir. Um, my paper conclusion is that the um, pa this paper is provided uh, uh, with the help of IoT and 
मशीन लर्निंग ए आई टेक्निक्स वी बिल्ड द हेल्थ केयर स्मार्ट हेल्थ केयर सिस्टम एंड वी इम्प्रूव द वी इम्प्रूव दैट इज इम्प्रूव द सक्सेस रेट एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ डॉक्टर्स डॉक्टर एंड रिसर्च डॉक्टर एंड पेशेंट बोथ आर फॉर बोथ पर्सन दैट इज वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर देम एंड this is very uh, um, ultimate result for the increasing the standard living across the board and it may even save the lives of the great number of people uh, in light the uh, recent advanced area such as the artificial intelligence and machine learning there is a reason to optimize about the future uh, uh, of uh, medical treatment uh, this uh, utilization of um, uh, artificial intelligence and the blockchaining uh, technology are major drive that the dri they drive the development and the upgrading of uh, every aspect of user uh, interaction in a smart healthcare uh, that is my reference paper sir i reference this paper uh, with the help of that i make this reviews um Thank you so much, sir. Any questions, sir? Yeah, uh, Sakshi, nice presentation. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Yeah, I would like to ask you that uh, why you have chosen the principal component analysis uh, for the uh, for your paper? Is there any particular reason? Which algorithm, sir? Uh, PCA. You have chosen PCA, no? Yes, sir. PC I am using for sir uh, because of uh, uh, reduce the um, uh, dimension or uh, um, complexity of the data, sir. I retrieve the data from the um, um, uh, retrieve the data and after that I reduce the complexity and uh, dimension. Uh, with for that we I I am using the PC algorithm, sir. Okay, and uh, what about uh, LSTM? Uh, because you have used by LSTM model, I have seen in your paper. Yes, by. Uh, uh, is this is there any uh, particular result or anything uh, that you can show us? Sir, actually, uh, yeah. according to previous um, uh, paper, a uh, literature survey, one paper is that. that um, uh, that is already see, uh, with the help of the bidirectional lstm model uh, they are uh, finding the um, uh, increase the efficiency of the uh, disease diagnosis uh, to find the disease diagnosis they find, uh, um, uh, for e efficiency is good uh, good for with the help of the bidirectional uh, by lstm model sir i am using that uh, advanced bilsum model with the help of that uh, i am thinking that is a better uh, better result accord with the uh, with compared to that bidirectional stm model sir yeah, but can you uh, tell us that how much uh, improvement has been done uh, by using the by lstm model and uh, still i am not implemented sir but uh, i am started but i am thinking this uh, will result approx 9 Um, with the help of by uh, lcstm uh, the deficiency will be increase uh, 97.3 sir um uh, for heart rate uh, diabetic patient i am thinking the diabetic patient um, um, if i am using bilsum model that is 98.2 approx sir uh, and where did you get the data set from we didn't uh, find any data set description in your presentation can you please elaborate Uh, sorry sir i didn't get what you say uh, data set data set uh, uh, i am asking about the data set because in the pre processing part we didn't uh, find the data set description where did you find yes, yes sir actually um, uh, i uh, retrieve the data from the crowd sir directly um, not uh, uh, so that's why i am not mentioning here um, uh, i retrieve the is data it, is it uh, is it mentioned in the reference Uh, no sir that is not uh, mentioned in the reference uh yeah uh, so that is the problem no uh, in future whenever you are working with a data set or whenever you are uh, referencing a data set you should uh, mention it in the reference and cite it in the proper slide right sure sir sure sure sir sure sure okay, sir no further question from my side thank you
थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू moving forward now i would like to call ganpati uh, to present his paper on a survey on paddy crops disease detection using machine learning and artificial intelligence models you may please start your presentation yes sir good evening sir can you hear me sir yes yes sir good evening sir i am ganpati subramanian research scholar bharat institute of uh, research, higher education and research chennai now i am going to present my paper a survey on paddy crop disease detection using machine learning and artificial intelligence model i hope you my screen is visible for you sir yes your screen is visible okay thank you sir um i actually i am going to um, diagnose the paddy crop disease by using machine learning model and the deep neural networks model that is my uh, major uh, survey paper major survey work in this uh, paper uh, i am going using two type of data sets in the first data set i getting the paddy from pg soil soil nutrition temperature humidity condition and rainfall from that uh, scenario the getting the crop first uh, uh, crop will be uh, predicted in the second data set it identify the disease crop disease uh, and uh, classify the disease the first data set is follow the n simple classification model in the case of n simple uh, classification model it uh, find the paddy crop from the soil nutrition and weather condition and the next next data set uh, it is used to predict the disease from the paddy by using the uh, resnet transfer learning model it is a uh, uh, microsoft product uh, using for uh, find, uh, classify the images from that class from that classification easily we can find the this is for how this is separated from the paddy and uh, there are several neural network and machine learning technique already utilized to find the paddy disease uh, in this uh, scenario i am using uh, two kind of data set in the first uh, data set uh, i am using some pre processing model in the pre processing model first i collection the data from the data set and uh, from that data set we um, uh, classify uh, cl apply the classification techniques in that the techniques uh, we uh, we found that uh, major disease found in the paddy and uh, uh, crop is uh, predict the uh, paddy crop from the soil nutrition and the climate condition and the uh, uh, pigeon soil as a result we find the different kind of diseases affected by the paddy uh, by using this model we can easily find the disease affected by the paddy and uh, uh, today lot of paddy diseases are available due to paddy disease uh, the production will be decreased by 10 to 15 percentage according to the existing papers i survey um, 10 to 15 percentage of production will be down because of the affecting the diseases in paddy so uh, i am going to apply some model machine some deep learning networks and machine learning models to find the paddy early as possible and inform the farmer uh, to take the remedial action that is my major criteria of this work so according to the existing uh, researchers uh, according to the existing papers i go through that there are they are using uh, majorly uh, gnn algorithm cnn algorithm deep cnn algorithm and image processing techniques in the techniques they found majorly four kind of diseases affected in the paddy uh, blast brown smut uh, rice blast brown uh, blot so these kind of majorly four diseases found in that uh, paddy uh, according to the data set and uh, um, by using this model by using this gnn model and cnn model they found the accuracy between the 0.5 to 1 so maximum accuracy get from the deep cnn network so in my proposed system in my proposed system uh, i am using resnet neural network model it is uh, high end model it is giving a more accuracy than this than uh, gnn model 
and uh, in the existing algorithm there is some limitations also that they are giving a lower accuracy and only one kind of data set can be used back propagation is not possible and uh, this is also limited this is only found so these are all the limitations uh, uh, found in the existing algorithm to make a remedy for in that and you uh, i applying the resonant neural network model so in the existing cnn model um, in the existing CNN model, majorly they are using a two kind of algorithm, one is minimum distance and uh, KNN classifier. In that uh, KNN classifier at minimum distance, they found the accuracy between them 69% to 81%. So <clears throat> according to resonant model, it will be increased and accuracy may be increased. Um, so nowadays, uh, maximum of uh, deep learning techniques are uh, using in the agriculture field uh, rather than the machine learning technique because deep learning techniques accurately find the uh, uh, diseases in affected in the paddy leaf. Uh, not only paddy, um, in agriculture, general agriculture, deep learning networks nowadays are more utilized than the machine learning models because of the accuracy. And uh, in my proposed system, in my proposed system, I am using first pre-processing step. In the pre-processing step, uh, machine learning and uh, um, uh, deep learning techniques I am using. In that machine learning pre-processing techniques, there are uh, two scenarios I am using in the pre-processing. One is future selection and future extraction from the image. So basically I am collected, uh, the image is paddy disease images. In that paddy disease images, um, uh, I am applying the feature selection and the feature extraction. In that uh, feature selection and the extraction, I am using the three kind of algorithms. One is uh, co correlation coefficient, mutual learning, and the threshold detection. These three, uh, after applying these three algorithms, the image is classified uh, from the paddy graph, and uh, we can easily found that uh, how uh, what all the disease is affected in the paddy. And uh, after applying the ensemble classification model, it is easily found that uh, the paddy graph is predicted from the soil condition and uh, weather, uh, weather condition and soil nutrition. So best paddy graph can be found after applying the ensemble classification model. Um, before applying the ensemble uh, classification model, only disease can be found. Sorry for the interruption, uh, but uh, could you please kindly conclude your presentation as you have only one minute left. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, then uh, in my uh, lot of uh, um, uh, disease can be found from the paddy craft, uh, paddy, paddy craft, then we apply the uh, Reginet transfer learning model. In the transfer learning model, image can be fetched under training using this model. After this model can be trained and evaluated, performance metrics can be evaluated. Uh, compared with the previous existing algorithm, this model giving more accuracy. And uh, uh, so according to this, first pre-processing model, pre-processing model, I'm applying the feature extraction and feature selection in that, uh, that pre-training model. It is easily found that uh, the crab diseases from the leaf, finally, it will be classified according to the diseases. So majorly, it found uh, three kinds of diseases, bacterial flight, brown smut, and the blast after applying the n symbol classification. n symbol classification is easily to segregate the diseases from the paddy graph. Uh, so finally, uh, this framework is efficiently used and find the disease from the paddy leaf. And used to utilize, us, uh, to utilize this uh, framework, timely found the diseases and uh, it is used to increase the protection of paddy. That is the major uh, goal of this uh, project. Um, um, already existing machine learning techniques uh, is there to found the uh, diseases from the paddy, but I'm using the deep learning networks because it's giving more accuracy. And it gives early uh, disease detection because uh, it can be uh, majorly improve the protection of paddy. That is, that's also. Uh, these are all the main references. Thank you, sir. Any queries? Yeah, uh, thank you for the uh, presentation. Uh, it was uh, very nice and compact. Uh, can you uh, tell us about the uh, shortcomings or uh, any particular restriction or uh, disadvantages from your method? Uh, 
disadvantages means uh, actually it has a two kind of data sets we are using. Uh, so finding the paddy is very difficult, sir, because nowadays uh, a lot of challenges is there to uh, uh, find the paddy crop because of uh, uh, bad soil, uh, bad condition, bad temperature, weed, uh, uh, weed nature, bad manure. So these are all the challenges to find the paddy crop and e it is easily affected uh, diseases in the paddy. Uh, these are all the challenges. When I'm getting and the data set is also uh, um, very challenging to get and uh, segregating images uh, um, from the original paddy image it is also very challenging uh, what are the uh, you know um, uh, advancement or increment or um, you know improvement you have got in your method from the uh, existing uh, literature review that you have shown us yes, uh, is there any improvement Improvement uh, yes sir in the existing system can I show one thing sir in the existing system uh, the major drawback is accuracy sir accuracy we can get up to 0 0.8 something but when we apply the deep CNN network I'm getting a 0 0.95 accuracy so from this accuracy only I'm going to the new uh, deep CNN networks and like uh, deep, uh, deep neural networks have you investigated why this uh, sudden jump in accuracy whenever you are applying deep CNN? Is there any particular reason? Uh, yes, sir. CNN is uh, applicable for only image data, uh, not nothing other data. CNN, KNN, those are all applicable for only image data. Without image data, we cannot process anything. But in the C deep CNN network and neural networks, we can get the not only image data from uh, binary data is also processed. So it is easily to improve the accuracy. That is an idea. So uh, let me get it right uh, that uh, your process is kind of time consuming, but it is giving better accuracy, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. No Thank more you, question sir. from me. Yeah. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ganpati. Yeah. Uh, Thank moving you, forward. Now, I would like to call Preeti uh, to present her paper on application of neural network data centers, predictive maintenance, production, sustainable computing, and healthcare. You may please start your presentation. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'm not able to share my screen. Okay, now I'll share. Uh, good afternoon, everyone present here. Uh, so I'm going to present a small review that we had done on applications of neural networks and data centers, predictive maintenance, um, uh, sustainable computing, and healthcare. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Uh, yes. Ganpati Subramanian, can you please turn off your video? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So we go for artificial neural networks, uh, mainly because the uh, traditional von Neumann architecture fails computation wise, and it is generally modeled after our brain neurons itself. And we have studied some eight case studies in various engineering fields ranging from cloud computing and uh, production scheduling. So we will present and present some of our findings here. Uh, the first paper that we took was task and rack scheduler. So they have done a recursive task and rack based algorithm. In this case, they had used a recursive neural network to accommodate the scalability in the ANN. And they have achieved around 99% accuracy. So the data set for this particular algorithm, uh, for the input for ANN, they had generated from genetic algorithm or some 16,000 training instances they had developed. And they had used some five hidden layers with 20 nodes each to train it. And uh, they are report some good results uh, for generating a schedule. Another vastly different paper 
uh, they had used a different type of artificial neural network where they use inhibitor neurons. So that diagram I have shown in the diagram on the right, left. So they have used for uh, three tasks, like and because with the inhibitor neurons, the schedule itself will be produced based on the uh, neurons. So there will be one extra layer uh, that will be there if it is not scheduled, if that particular instance, it is not scheduled anywhere. So they found that the time convergence is good, but a lot of network reinitializations uh, may be required for convergence. Uh, next, we have studied some papers in predictive maintenance. So in the first uh, work, uh, there is an objective for the cutting tool where they have to minimize the weighted sum of uh, tardy times for jobs and maintenance tasks. And in this work, they have used a neural network for parameter setting for genetic algorithm and ICA. So these are the uh, input layers and output layers for these. They are not using ANN for the schedule itself, but to give the parameters for these meta heuristics. So what we have seen is that ANN guided algorithms also allow for more robust solutions. Uh, next, we have studied some work in production scheduling, uh, namely like flow, flow shop scheduling. So here one work, the, there is a bike criteria for minimizing make span and mean completion time. And various sequences of ANN is fed and weights are learned by minimizing the sum squared error. In another work, uh, back propagation neural network is designed. Again, they used uh, training uh, with five job problems. They found that for larger problem instances, it needs to be trained. And again, in this work, uh, they have not justified uh, the uh, uh, optimal number of uh, parameters for the neural network empirically. So the, their results uh, are a little, but it, they did say that it does perform better for the GA heuristic as compared to the Suleiman heuristic. Uh, next in the area of sustainable computing, we have seen two works in microgrid scheduling where they predict the on-off state in the power plant by using a hybrid ANN and PSO. So in this case, mean absolute error is used to fix the learning rate and number of hidden layers. And uh, they have shown some good output uh, for with the six input, 25 output layer and so on. And one more uh, different ANN is used in the hydropower silt analysis where they are using it for uh, data clustering for silt patterns so that they can predict and uh, shut down the turbines uh, before the, if the silt uh, threshold reaches above a particular pattern. Uh, one more work we have seen ANN in drain rescheduling conflict resolution. So, they have taken 331 cases of uh, uh, the manual uh, dispatches decision process and they have trained the ANN based on the output from here. They have taken the priority of the train, the passing, both the passing trains, the uh, conflict resolution delay, potential conflicts, and they have used one hidden layer to predict the uh, output and they have given a very high accuracy is reported around 327 out of 331 is uh, reproduced as it is. And in healthcare, we have seen two works, uh, one ANN for obesity and a, one ANN for prediction of fall in older patients. So again, they have determined the uh, various inputs. For example, in obesity, they, there are these 11 uh, metrics that they have used to uh, denote the input layer and they have classified the individual as obese or not obese, compared the result with logistic regression. Uh, they did uh, what we have seen in the report is it is not performing much better than logistic regression. Maybe some better uh, network design will give a good result. And for fall prediction also, because they had very few data, data set was a problem in healthcare. So the, if they are not getting very good uh, sufficient data set, then uh, the accuracy also will uh, reduce. So here they have uh, trained using multi-layer perceptron, average neural network and neuroevolution and MLP performs best, they have reported. So what we have understood from these uh, studies- Sorry for the interruption, uh, but can you please conclude your session as you have only one minute left? Okay. So what we have understood from these uh, case studies is that um, in the design of the ANN, um, if they identify optimal number of hidden neurons and layers, it will be good. And um, I will skip this. These are some highlights and shortcomings. And in the future work, these are some future research directions that we are proposing. There should be some heuristic to determine optimal number of hidden layers and the parameters for the neural network for data center scheduling, 
um, they have uh, they, you can have quality of scheduling quality of service parameters and for medical decision systems uh, there should be some collaboration with the medical personnel as well same thing for measuring critical uh, systems and uh, this is the summary that we have from uh, our uh, session uh, from our uh, literature review thank you Any questions? Hello. Yeah. Um, I have few questions. Sure, sir. Uh, firstly, that uh, you have mentioned, uh, first of all, uh, very nice and compact presentation. Thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, firstly, I would like to ask that you have mentioned about hidden uh, layers being uh, minimized or something like that. Yeah. Uh, can you, uh, from your research findings, can you hmm. uh, mention that uh, what should be the optimal, uh, you know, uh, hidden uh, layers or number of hidden layers that should be there? Um, sir, actually, uh, when we talk about the number of hidden layers, it, the research shows that uh, like just because there are more number of hidden layers and neurons, it doesn't mean there is a better learning. But from the research work, what we have seen is that in some cases, they are empirically determining using the mean sum, uh, uh, means uh, squared error or the sum of squared error, the optimal layers, like where they are reaching the convergence path. So when they have set it that way, and they have set the num they have varied the hidden layers and varied the neurons, and they have found the optimal number of neurons that minimizes or gives a better convergence for the uh, mean absolute error and things like that, that yields a better result. So that is what we have uh, understood. Yeah, but uh, that is not the answer to my question. I'm asking that uh, if someone asks you that uh, uh, if you are proposing this current uh, method and hmm. uh, someone asks you that uh, what about the optimal hidden layers or how many hidden layers they should use, Mm -hmm. uh, in their uh, research work, uh, according to you know similar field of study, mm -hmm. then uh, what you are proposing? How many hidden layers should be um, there? So I am what I have come across is there are some general guidelines based on the number of hid input neurons, and uh, there are some general. I don't remember exactly how many are there, but there are some general guidelines for how many hidden neurons should be there. So, but again, if we want to increase the optimality of that, then we can also go for this method also. I am okay, not remembering you, uh, exactly back. the, yeah. Go back. Okay, it, it's, it's fine. Uh, yeah. You have mentioned about uh, GA somewhere uh, in your presentation. Yeah. Previously. Yeah. 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 Uh, just, 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 just uh, after this slide or. Um, yeah. Yeah. Here, uh, or maybe after, uh, yeah, the, in this These slide. Two, uh, yeah, sir. Yeah, uh, you, you are claiming that results show that GA has lesser error than ICA, which yes. is the imperialist uh, competitive Imperial. algorithm. Have you, yes. uh, have you investigated why is it having the uh, uh, lesser errors? The, I... I do remember reading it, but um, um, they, it had something to do with the uh, the way the algorithm was working, the parameters they had set up. Um, it is there in the paper I had written also, but I'm not recalling as now what exactly it was. Okay, okay. Whenever you are claiming it, uh, I think uh, you should but mention it. But I have, I have uh, mentioned it in the paper that much I remember. Why uh, GA Yeah, was, but uh, uh, whenever, whenever you are presenting it, you, you should mention it yes, in the yes, slide sir. also, right? Yeah, sure. Isn't it? You. Whenever yes, you are claiming it, you should be uh, mentioning it. Uh, anyways, yeah. uh, nice presentation. Thank you. Can I move on to the next time? Yes, sir. Moving towards the next next presentation. Now I would like to call Sanjay V. Hanji to present his paper on artificial intelligence based conversational 
agent in the Indian banking system and adoption and integration perspective. You may please start your presentation. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, hello, Professor uh, Chakravarti and uh, Mr. Karak. So I'm um, presenting uh, a paper on uh, artificial intelligence-based uh, conversation agents in Indian banking system uh, on an adoption perspective and integration perspective. So I'm basically a management faculty. So I'm in this uh, computer science uh, conference. So um, in management, uh, we are mainly concerned with uh, uh, how whatever technology you developers are doing, how these technologies are being adopted and uh, how they are used and what is their user experience and uh, stuff like that. So our main uh, focus here is on uh, conversational agents or, or what we call as chatbots and how these uh, chatbots have been adopted, especially in Indian banking system. All right. Uh, so as we know that uh, te technology, integration of technology in uh, managing business operations and uh, customer interaction have become a cornerstone for success in uh, modern marketplace. And all businesses are uh, trying to incorporate technologies. And when I say about technology, AI is at the forefront of uh, the technology in this uh, global impact. And uh, AI's capacity to uh, imitate human cognition and propels its, uh, you know, uh, forefront in this disruptive force. And when we talk about AI conversational agents or the uh, chatbots, what we say, uh, these are predominantly being adopted in uh, many of the sectors and uh, banking, um, uh, and especially in in travel tourism, it has been majorly used. And even in education sector now, many colleges are having their AI chatbots on their websites to attract students and um, give 24 by 7 um, customer service. Now, powered with natural language processing and machine learning, these agents uh, reshape the interactions and uh, it will reshape the entire customer experience on the websites, provided if they are uh, AI powered chatbots or otherwise if it is a normal chatbot, then at least as far as I'm concerned, like I try, it is uh, not so convenient uh, to chat with and the information what I want to give. So especially in banking, banking sector in particular has been quick to embrace uh, the potential of AI conversation agents or especially the conversational agents or normal chatbots, what we say, mm, like SBA is having and many other banks are having, but I don't see that, you know, they're they don't have that uh, conversational, this thing or emotional connect, what we say, anthropomorphism. Those things are missing, uh, what I felt. And that's what motivated me to take up this research. And these virtual assistants innovate customer interactions and addressing queries in real time. It should be doing that. And AICAs handling transactions, FAQs, or offering personalized financial services are vital for banking's improved customer service. Uh, but the research gap here is uh, in the rising interest in the integrating AICAs across sectors, especially for managing customer interactions, engages researchers globally. There is a lot of research going on and uh, studies explore AICAs adoption using uh, different uh, technology adoption models like TAM or et 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 cetera. Yet the, a gap persists in understanding uh, the role of trust, especially anthropomorphism, which is uh, human-like uh, characteristics what AI chatbot should be having. And uh, how do customers perceive risk in using these uh, conversational ag agents, especially in banking transactions or getting banking information because a lot of sensitive information they will be dealing with. These aspects influence user perception are often too overlooked in the research. They are, they are not being included uh, in the models. Now, why this research is important? Because the ICA's impo impact in the sectors uh, like banking are vast, making this study relevant to both industry and developers. And study user perception and intention in adopting ICA's can reveal strategies to enrich experiences and transform the industry as such. And considering the above mentioned research gaps, this study investigate factor influencing, factors influencing AI pod uh, CAs 
in adoption of Indian banking uh, scenario. And uh, we are using here uh, UT82 model, which is a very well-established model. I'll come to that model. Uh, we are extending that model with three more variables, that is trust, anthropomorphism, and perceived privacy risk, uh, which might give much insights in the uh, customer perception perceptions. The theoretical background, what we're um, theoretical framework, what we're using, or the theory what we're using is UT82, that is Unified Theory of Acceptance and Usage of Technology 2, which was uh, um, founded by uh, Venkatesh et al. in 2003, and it was further uh, improved in 2012. And this is a you know a model which is uh, uh, been widely used to understand technology individual technology adoption any technology it can sorry be. for the interruption uh, but yeah. please conclude your session as we have only one minute remaining okay so this um, um, technology model i'll just directly go to the model so it it has certain variables like perceived uh, uh, performance expectancy of the technology effort expectancy social influence facilitating condition economic motivation um, habit trust anthropomorphism and uh, perceived risk. Now, this is our research methodology. We engaged with uh, uh, existing bank customers who are more into mobile banking. Uh, this thing. And these are some of the statistics. Now, here we found that uh, customers mainly value the performance of the uh, conversational agents and the effort, the ease of use is very, very important in, uh, you know, uh, adopting uh, as we can see that uh, i personally use and it is very difficult to use those chatbots as of now and um, hedonic motivation they would like to enjoy that usage the experience of en enjoyment in using the technology is very important in their adoption trust of course in banking trust is important anthropomorphism human like characteristics like human like speaking in the chatbot is very important and perceived risk yes bankers have to reduce the risk uh, involved in it. So that is the perception which they have to remove. So implication for managers, um, bank managers is building customer trust to communicate uh, to their customers on um, using this and they have to encourage the people to use chatbots. As ATMs came, they encouraged them to use ATMs. Similarly, they have to encourage customers to use these conversational agents and software developers mainly. Uh, performance wise, yes, customers look for a better performance um, conversational agents. Ease of use is very important and uh, it should be involved with fun and entertaining. That's what uh, our research has found. And developers need to emphasize on user-centric designs, principles using anthropomorphism, human-like characteristics when the bot actually conversates with the people. And security measures, privacy concerns have to be addressed where more research can be done here. And that's what is our uh, contribution to the research. And uh, since we are focused only on banking, generalizability is a little bit a of a challenge. And future research can also focus on, uh, you know, more industries, more geographical uh, contexts and user segments, which can uh, foster better understanding of these adoptions. Thank you. Yeah, uh, um, uh, very good uh, presentation, Mr. Hanji. But I have few questions for you. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, uh, there are uh, different uh, variations of AI. You know, uh, you yes. must have come across during your research. That yeah. is, uh, you know, narrow AI is there, responsible is uh, responsible AI is there, explainable AI is there. Is yeah. there any uh, implication or, uh, you know, uh, application of these uh, different variations of AI uh, in your work? Uh, no, no, Professor, no. Uh, I, we have focused here only on the, uh, I, I'm, to be honest with you, I don't, and uh, I have not come across this uh, three sector, uh, you know, segments of uh, or types of AI. Oh, there, there, there are there are not only three. There are different uh, variations of AI. Uh, yeah. There are um, everyday AI is evolving, and there are yes. plenty of uh, you know methodologies coming across from the researchers. Yes. I have uh, told you about the three most popular ones, but uh, have you 
considered no. any of this uh, uh, including your research or um, no. you know have you found out that uh, any of this ha have been included in your research no that uh, was not in the scope of the study research okay okay um one more thing uh, that you have talked about uh, privacy and security concerns yeah. uh, can you uh, briefly highlight about that because we, uh, it was a uh, little bit uh, overhauled in your presentation can you yes. if you can uh, give a brief about there that are, there are two aspects of this uh, uh, particular variable when i talk about security concerns or uh, uh, the perceived risk, what people perceive when they use any technology, well, you, especially in banking. So uh, there are two ways of looking at it. One, at the banking manager's perspective, because they are the ones who have to encourage their customers to use the technology and uh, to the continuous communication and interaction and encouraging the customers to use. As you remember that um, 15 years back when ATMs came, the bank managers and the bank employees used to encourage their customers to go to the ATM. Whereas people have that uh, perceived risk then also. Security concerns were there. What if I uh, try to draw 10,000 rupees and 500 less I'm getting? What will happen if something of this happens? So this kind of problems were have to be addressed by the bank managers. And only when bank managers or the bank employees promote this technology, there will be more demand of technology and uh, developers will have more work to do. If the technology is not been adopted properly, then there is a bottleneck there. A lot of technology is coming, but it is end user is not using. So ultimately, adoption is there, there is a slow adoption in the market. Maybe it will take five, six years, more years to when uh, before you know everybody starts using this. So another perspective here is the developer's point of view. So here, developer's point of view also they have to make sure that when customers are trusting this technology. Security concerns in terms of sharing their uh, bank details over the to the chatbot or uh, the chatbot is learning a lot of things about the customer. It should not be misused. Those kind of things. When I interviewed some with some of the customers, that kind of concerns they are having. That has to be taken off. And uh, I don't know what all things are required and security challenges are there. That has to be taken care of in building this this thing. Yeah. Uh, one final question that uh, you, you have talked about that, um, you know, interviewing or uh, communicating with the customers. Have you mentioned uh, anything about that in your paper or maybe in your presentation that you can show us? Um, yeah. Yeah. So here in the second point uh, I mentioned, they should engage in more communication, uh, more on communicating and recommending customers to use of chatbots for their banking purposes. Yeah, but uh, I was hmm. I was looking for a little bit more analytical of this uh, part. You know, uh, maybe you have gone on to fifty customers, and uh, you know, a little bit more analytic analysis you could have presented. That's uh, what I was looking for. Achha. Yeah, anyways, uh, I, that was a nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I have no Thank more you. questions. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and thank you, Mr. Hanji. Thank you. Moving forward, now I would like to call Satil Shrivastava. Uh, to present his paper on utility framework for keeping track of organizational funds. You may please start your presentation. Yeah, I start the one. I will first share my screen. One minute, I will share my screen. Yeah, is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Yeah, so... Uh, uh... Uh, and this is our agenda for today. Like we will tell about introduction literature survey, our system architecture, then what are the different flowchart, test cases, conclusions, and the references. For us, why we have taken this topic because to in today world organization uh, uh, mainly uh, 
प्रेजेंटेशन युअर uh voice is kind of breaking out uh okay okay now uh, now it's clear na like uh, so our yeah, motivation yeah, now for it's this clear, it's clear i okay okay now we'll continue my presentation so our motivation for this project is that the uh, organization many times suffer from corruptions like uh, they uh, in many organization funds uh, projects are going on researches are going on and the funds are required for those projects and many times these funds are not managed properly and the transactions are not very transparent and corruptions occur so to avoid it uh, we need some method to uh, make it uh, immutable so nobody can change it so for this purpose we have chosen uh, the blockchain technology uh, i will move forward in this so these are the various uh, literature uh, papers which we have referred like the first paper title is towards devising a fund management system using blockchain where the authors have used olbb uh, vm obfuscation to know the uh, sorry to sorry to interrupt uh, can you go to your uh, you know proposed method or whatever slide this is yeah yeah proposed method yeah yeah you can you skip this uh, let us survey slide yeah like uh, yeah like uh, I I need to again explain you this slide. Yeah, uh, you're telling like. Uh, no this... no no. We oh, um I'm asking about uh can you uh, skip the literature survey okay, and okay, go okay, to okay. your. Yeah. So this is our system architecture. So company first uh will maintain some resources and funds to fund a project. Then when they have a certain amount of pro uh, fund, a smart contract will be deployed, and this smart contract. will run the transaction based on the some preconditions okay and then in this project mainly there are three entities admin is there and then uh, team supervisor is there and finance validator is there so i will then show you the work of the admin so uh, i will first show you the work of the admin what admin can do mainly so this is the work of the admin admin can create a project which is with the attribute as shown in the figure the project title description finance validator address and after that he can uh, deploy a smart contract related to that project then he admin can also the close the project when the project is finished and the ether which is remaining in that project will be transferred back to the wallet through which the uh, project is funded then we have the team supervisor uh, who's uh, working as shown in this figure who can uh, request a uh, transaction for this he need to submit a bill copy then this bill copy will be uh, verified by the uh, the finance validator after that this uh, finance validator validation the funds will be transferred to this project and then he can proceed with the project this is the work of the finance validator like he can deposit the fund he can uh, with, uh, withdraw uh, uh, deposit the fund to the project and uh, he can accept the request that the team supervisor has made so uh, again i will show you once this how uh, it is going on uh, in this from the help of this figure like the team supervisor first request a transaction through which a invoice will be generated and then invoice will be sent for the verification and the team validator uh, team supervisor will first verify this uh, uh, invoice and if the it is legal invoice then uh, block uh, block will be created which will represent this transaction then the block will be sent to the every node in our network and a uh, node then validates this transaction and then the blo block will be added to the blockchain and the uh, update is distributed across the network and the transaction will be complete and uh, this is how it's going and 
So these are the test cases. So as you can see from the figure, uh, one smart contract will be deployed, some uh, project will be created, then a person will request a project with the help of uh, the receipt, then uh, uh, he will send a request to the uh, team finance validator, then finance validator will pass the fund from his uh, company wallet to the project. As you can see here, it is 0 0.0584 Sepulia ETH, where ETH is a uh, currency of the blockchain. Then you can see that funds has been transferred from uh, wallet to that value, as you can see from 24 seconds ago, from this wallet address to this wallet address, the fund has been transferred and the value is 0 0.01 ETH. And then uh, like this help us to uh, oh, oh, it create security, openness, and then it offers a decentralized and automated method of enforcing and financing terms and condition and also remove the need for middleman and reduce the danger of frauds and mistakes. Yeah, these are all the references which we have taken. And yeah, thank you. Hello. Yeah, uh, uh, nice presentation. Uh, I have a question uh, that uh, why didn't you think about uh copywriting it or going for a product for it sir, because uh, they are so much uh, yeah. yeah uh sajan let me answer this okay, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so actually we have already have developed a product regarding this <laughs> we have implemented this hello yeah uh, but uh, why haven't go uh, why haven't you proceeded for the copywriting or you know patenting the Whatever your product is. Actually, uh, uh, we are going ahead with uh, multiple uh, hackathons so we can test our implementation. Not only, although th the functionality works, we have to check with the performance wise. Like, is it as fast uh, the transactions that take pl place? Like, uh, security and validation is already taken by, by blockchain. But in the real world, the transactions must be fast, right? So we had to test yeah, our uh... model. Oh, have you tested your model against the you know existing methodologies or existing frameworks? Yes, by security wise, yes, blockchain beats it. It takes care of everything. The uh, like our implementation is span across many examples. Like it could be government projects, it could be organizational, anything. So yeah, security wise, uh, it it can take care. But performance wise, are those transactions fast enough? Is it happening in real time? That's what we're currently testing. Once we are done with that, yes, we'll go ahead with uh, patenting or, uh, you know, copywriting it. Okay. Well, well, have you found out any improvement over the existing frameworks? Uh, yes. Uh, one thing is, yeah, uh, coming again with security. Yes, it beats security. Basically, co companies, uh, you know, uh, no need to hire auditors. They can easily audit because no transaction is... Uh, you know, tampered with or nothing happens since blockchain takes care of it. Uh, no need of uh, think uh, thinking of worrying or any other attacks. So, yes. So, is there any other question? No, no, no. Oh, that's all from from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Moving forward with the presentations. Now I would like to call Nadia to present her paper on efficient hybrid neural network for automatic modulation recognition. You may please start your presentation. Hello, one minute, please, to share my presentation. Do you see my presentation? Yes, we can see that. Okay. Thank you. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm... Uh, Katrina Dia, PhD student at the National Institute of Posts and, Posts and Telecommunications, Raba, Morocco. 
Today, I'm uh, so delighted to present our research work entitled Efficient Hybrid Neural Network for Automatic Modulation Recognition. The plan adopted to explain our work is as follows. First of all, I would like to outline the context and the motivation of our research work. Next, I will focus on the scope of work, which is automatic modulation classification in cognitive radio networks. Then I will move on to, to introduce traditional AM, AMC methods. After that, I will present different deep learning schemes that have been explored to address uh, the same problem. Then I will go to highlight the contribution of our research work. Afterwards, proposed model and experiments details will be presented. Finally, conclusion and perspectives will be given in the end of the presentation. Now I will start by explaining the context and the motivation of our work, which is in the field of cognitive radio. First, I will present some facts and information about frequency spectrum that will help us to understand the motivations behind the research in cognitive radio. Indeed, the radio frequency spectrum represents a scarce and finite resource that is used for transmitting information in the radio environment. It is an indispensable resource for several services, including radio communication, radio broadcasting, maritime radio, Wi-Fi, wi etc. The frequency spectrum is managed as follows. At the national level, the, assign the assignment of the spectrum to these services is managed and regulated by local authorities that are responsible for determining the appropriate frequency band, the geographic extent of the use of this band, the maximum transmission power, etc. At the global level, the International Telecommunication Union organizes every three to four years the World Radio Communication Conferences so as to examine and revise the treaties governing the use of the radio frequency spectrum. One of the fundamental purposes of these entities is to ensure a minimum interference level between the different radio technologies. As you see in the table, different frequency bands are already exclusively assigned to various technologies such as global system for, system for mobile communication and can't be used by other services to avoid interferences. Therefore, the major challenge to, is to meet the requirements of future and emerging wireless, wireless technologies in terms of frequency resources, which is hampered by a number of issues, including first scarcity of frequency spectrum. Spectrum is a fine natural resource. Second, static spectrum allocation policy, whereby spectral band bands allocated to a wireless communication system are used exclusively by that system that has led to the shortage of frequencies. So third, strong demand for spectrum, resulting from the emergence and abundance of wireless technologies and the extremely rapid proliferation of radio applications developed in the scope of the Internet of Things. Fourth, crowding of unlicensed bands. Unlicensed bands are portions of spectrum that can be freely used by all radios respecting a specific set of rules such as a short channel access mechanism. These bands have become very crowded and can't accommodate more wireless applications. Finally, sporadic use of frequency bands. The assigned spectrum is inefficiently used in all the domains such as the time domain, the, the, the space domain, and the, and the frequency domain. Cognitive radio technology has been widely recognized as an efficient approach to address the aforesaid issues by enabling the opportunistic 
the opportunistic use of least congested portions of the licensed bands and consequently ensuring efficient use of the frequency spectrum. One of the main functional steps of the cognitive cycle is spectrum sensing. In this phase, CR explores the radio environment, detects different channels and gathers other meaningful information such as modulation types of sensed signals. Now I will outline the scope of our work. As Sorry for the interruption, ma'am. Uh, but please conclude your presentation as you have only one minute remaining. Okay. So the scope of our work is is modulation classification as a means to identify the underlying modulation intercept for uh, of intercepted signals in cognitive region. Motivated by the great success of deep learning networks in many domains, such as computer vision and image recognition, several papers have explored the use of deep learning networks to deal with the IMC problem to overcome the shortcoming of traditional IMC techniques. In this slide, there are some examples of the ill-based methods that are already the, uh, that I, I, I found in the literature, such as GRU2, which contains two layer GRU network, uh, etc. Also, uh, several Accurate the ill-based IMC methods have been proposed in the literature. Only a few papers have dealt with the IMC problem from the perspective of a resource constrained device, since the conserved methods require high energy processing and storage and storage resources. Therefore, the main contribution of our work is introducing a lightweight neural neural network constructed by fusing gated recurrent units and multiple convolutional blocks. These convolutional blocks are meticulously designed using asymmetric kernels to reduce computational complexity and squeeze and excitation blocks to enhance channel dependencies with minimal computational costs. Uh, additionally, the convolutional blocks incorporate skip connections to improve classification accuracy and mitigate the vanishing gradient problem. This is the uh, architecture of our, uh, of our model. It contains a GRU block, which is used to capture temporal dependencies and has 50 GRU cells. Uh, for uh, the CN parts, we have uh, three CN, CNN block. Each convolutional block employs asymmetric filter and skip connections for efficient capture of local spatial features while minimizing parameter complexity and incorporates squeeze and excitation block to introduce channel-wise attention mechanism to act to enhance future feature representation. In this slide, the uh, uh, there is the is a block architecture and the, the is a based in block. Uh, I don't give uh, the, the I, I will I will I will not give the details of that. So for uh, in our experiments we have uh, we have uh, performed our experiments using the publicly available data set radio ML2060. It, uh, it, it contains a thorough repre representation of real world signal propag uh, propagation scenarios with 11 modulation types. And it takes into consideration a lot of channel impairments. The data set was split into a ratio of four one specifically, 80% of the examples were allocated off training purposes, 
while the remaining 20% were reserved for testing. Uh, there is uh, uh, the experimental environment and parameter setting. Donc, we have uh, used the, uh, the Adam optim optimizer and the cross entropy loss function. And uh, for uh, comparison purposes, we have re-implemented uh, re all the benchmarks using the same uh, implementation and uh, parameter setting. We have done the three experiments. Uh, this uh, figure and table highlights the results of the initial experiments that aimed at assessing the impacts of altering the number of CNN blocks on the performance of the proposed model. The focus is on how accuracy and complexity change with different numbers of CNN blocks. Regarding classification accuracy, there is a clear enhancement in the average accuracy across all CNNs as the number of convolutional blocks increases. This implies that the inclusion of more CNN blocks within the architecture corresponds to an improved capacity of the model to effectively classify diverse modulation. As for complexity, with the increase in the number of CNN blocks, the model's complexity is escalates as, as reflected by the expanding count of trainable parameters and inference time for each ad added block. This introduces a trade-off uh, scenario wherein the accuracy gains achieved to, uh, through additional CNN blocks come at the cost of the heightened complexity. In our case, it is more reasonable to stick to a model with two or three CNN blocks as the accuracy gains begin to plateau after that. Moreover, this uh, configuration showcases a relatively moderate number of trainable parameters and shorter infer inference time times. In this second experiment, we perform an extensive comparison between our suggest, uh, proposed model and uh, the L-based dynamic model, namely GRU2. CLDNN, SCNN, MCLDNN, MCNET, etc. It's worth noting that to, gar to, to ensure a fair comparison, to ensure a fair comparison between all models, we have we have used the same setting hyperparameter values. Uh, as uh, shown in, in this table, our proposed model strikes in, uh, a, ba a good balance between accuracy and complexity with the highest accuracy and the lowest no number of trainable parameters with a moderate inference time. It proves to be a compelling choice for modulation classific classification task. The SCNN model, while boosting the lowest uh, inference time, is compromised by a lower average accuracy 40 of 46%. In the final experiment, we assess the accuracy of our proposed model across the 11 modulation types. The accuracy of most modulation format is greater than uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Can you conclude the slide the fastest? Oh, okay, okay. So the, uh, the accuracy of uh, most modulation format is greater than 93%, and uh, our model have difficulties to distinguish between MDSB and WBFM modul modulation due to the time domain resemblance and shared features between uh, this modulation. As conclusion, uh, we have uh, pr proposed inefficient design. Our lightweight DL model combining GRU and CNN blocks with innovative techniques achieve a good uh, accuracy and uh, strikes a good balance between 
accuracy and efficiency. Uh, performance benchmark, uh, the experiments uh, show, uh, sh sh show uh, our model's superiority and accuracy and, uh, and uh, in the number of trainable parameters. Uh, as a perspective, uh, future research focus on refining the model's computational efficiency through techniques like pruning and quantization and uh, for real world deployment, uh, we, we have the aim to transit from simulations to real world application for applications for our model. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation, Nadia Kastri. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Firstly, uh, uh, did you investigate that uh, why your proposed model is uh, working better than the uh, models that you have quoted in your slide? I, 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 I don't understand. Can you repeat, please? Yeah, I'm asking, have you investigated or have you found out the reason that why your proposed model is working better than the existing frameworks that you have mentioned in your slide? Yes, of course, we have we have did all the experiments. And as uh, you show here in this table, our model have, have uh, the highest accuracy, highest average accuracy and have the highest accuracy with the fewest number of trainable parameters. The problem of our model is in the inference time. We have uh, yeah, we have yeah. uh, I, I I I have seen it, but uh, what is the reason? What is the reason that uh, using less parameters you are gaining more accuracy? Is there any justification to that? Justification is investigation about accuracy. No, justification about the improvement despite uh, you know using lesser parameters but gaining more accuracy. Is there any particular justification or have you investigated or have you found out anything regarding your study? Yeah. Because we have gets we have gets this uh, this, uh, this values through ex investigations. So our model have the high, highest accuracy and the highest average accuracy, have the fewest number of trainable parameters, but in terms of inference time, there are some, some benchmarks that outperform slightly our, our model. Um, okay. Uh, what about the inference time? Uh, it is uh, looking like uh, it is taking much more time than the existing models. Uh, can you uh, highlight on that? Okay. okay, for inference time, our model have have uh, have a comp a competitive competitive inference time in comparison with uh, with. Uh, uh, MCLDNN and PCGDNN, but it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, higher than some of, of these benchmarks. But uh, but this is uh, compensated of the highest accuracy. If we take, uh, for example, the SCNN model, also uh, also uh, it it has the the, the the lowest inference time, but it has the, the lowest average accuracy and the lowest highest accuracy. So our model uh, strike a good balance between accuracy and complexity. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. Thank you for your uh, presentation. We can move on to the next one.
moving towards the next presentation now i would like to call priyanka patel to present her paper on improving traffic surveillance with deep learning powered vehicle detection identification and recognition you may please start your presentation priyanka patel moving forward now i would like to call kedar v to present his paper on path planning of autonomous vehicle for real world scenario using parla you may please start your paper good evening everyone i am kedar vikarnavar along with my co-authors mahesh sakshi ragvendra shet nalini se ayer from kla technological university huballi to present our research paper titled path planning of autonomous vehicle for real world scenario using carla the table of contents include the introduction motivation path planning and carla simulator a star algorithm functional block diagram flow chart results conclusion and references coming to the introduction self driving or autonomous vehicle help users to improve their performance Uh, to safely navigate uh, from the start to the end location uh, using the uh, safest and uh, fastest route and also avoid uh, accident rates there are uh, several modules which the self driving vehicles rely on such as uh, localization sensing planning and control among these the planning module uh, plays an uh, important role the planning module focuses on determining the optimal route from the current location of the vehicle to the end destination the carla uh, serves as a simulation platform for testing out our algorithm a variety of path planning algorithms uh, such as a star rrt and uh, reinforcement uh, learning uh, are uh, existing and they can be employed in carla to generate effective paths motivation uh, path planning and decision making ability of the uh, robot helps to find a convenient uh, efficient and uh, safest and fastest route for uh, reaching our uh, end uh, destination it helps to reduce the accident rate on the uh, roads it also plays an uh, important role in ai and uh, robotics it helps to improve the traffic congestion and also uh, helps us to save a uh, fuel cost so what is path planning it is also known as motion or trajectory planning uh, it is determining an optimal route for a moving vehicle from its current position to uh, end location while avoiding obstacles and adhering to predefined constraints such as traffic rules lane rules etc the main goal is to minimize the parameters like time distance or energy consumption for efficient and effective navigation as depicted in uh, the figure the vehicle here uh, has the starting point as marked by the yellow node and its uh, end location is the red uh, node it has uh, multiple paths to navigate uh, to the end location and uh, these paths are planned using the uh, path planning algorithm and the one which offers the safest uh, convenient and the shortest route Uh, will be chosen by the vehicle to navigate safely uh, to the to reach the end destination this is uh, the picture of uh, carla simulator which we use for deploying our path planning algorithm and for testing it so carla is an open source simulator for autonomous uh, driving uh, research uh, it in addition to providing uh, open source code and protocol carla provides open digital assets like urban layouts uh, vehicles traffic manager and uh, pedestrian etc for uh, free uh, which we can use in our projects it offers an extensive testing ground uh, for algorithm related to perception sensor fusion and uh, control including realistic traffic scenarios the main advantage of using carla simulator is that Uh, along with uh, deploying uh, our machine learning algorithms for testing it uh, we can use an alternative approach where 
uh, we get to use Carla's inbuilt uh, modules and sensors like uh, collision detection sensor, a lane invasion, uh, GNSS sensor, uh, which do not uh, which uh, helps us to avoid uh, a training of uh, machine learning models and then deploying them. These can uh, these help us to test our algorithms in real time by using Carla's inbuilt sensors. Uh, there are a number of uh, algorithms uh, which come under uh, path planning, uh, such as uh, ASTAR, DigXtras, RRT, and uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, we have used uh, ASTAR algorithm for our uh, project. ASTAR is a popular uh, grid-based searching algorithm which finds the shortest path between two points on map by effectively exploring options in a weighted graph while taking uh, uh, travel time and distance into account. So uh, the main parameter uh, used by ASTAR is uh, known as the cost, uh, which is F of n, and it is the sum of G of n and H of n, where G of n is the cost required to move from the first from one node to another, and H of n is heuristic cost, which uh, which uh, which which calculates uh, the cost from the current node to the end node. This is the functional uh, block diagram. First, uh, we import the necessary modules uh, required for uh, integrating with Carla simulator. Next, from the Carla's blueprint library, we uh, import the Carla hometown map. Carla provides a set of uh, seven uh, town maps uh, where we can, uh, uh, which we can use for testing our algorithms. Next, uh, from the blueprint library, we uh, import uh, a vehicle model uh, to, uh, Sorry for test. the interruption, uh, Kedar. Uh, it would be great if you uh, kindly conclude your presentation as you have only one minute remaining. Okay. So these are uh, uh, the basic modules uh, which we uh, use for uh, testing uh, on the Carla simulator. This is the main flow chart, uh, how we uh, use uh, uh, the ASTAR algorithm for uh, uh, finding the shortest uh, uh, path. These are the uh, results. So this is the start location, which we input, and this is the end location. And you can see uh, the vehicle, uh, uh, the path has been uh, uh, marked by the green uh, uh, lines on the map. This is the top view of the car, and this is the side view of the car, which is following those uh, waypoints. The waypoints contain the XYZ coordinates of the location on the map. Uh, further extending your projects, uh, we have uh, uh, we can include any local map and uh, deploy our algorithm. And we have deployed our algorithm on the local map. So this is how we extract any local map from the Google Maps and integrate onto Carla for testing it. So this is the uh, Exodia map, uh, which we have extracted. Uh, it is from a uh, local area in uh, Bali. And uh, it has uh, uh, successfully planned uh, uh, shortest path uh, even in uh, the real world map. And uh, this is the top view of the car, which has which is seen uh, following those uh, waypoints to reach the uh, end destination. The future scope uh, includes uh, uh, planning a more sophisticated model in a dynamic uh, uh, environment you know, using uh, 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 sensors like collision, uh, GNSS, and uh, camera to respond to real world environment. These are the references. And we acknowledge our university uh, for providing us with the Center for Intelligent Mobility Lab to carry out our research program. Thank you. Uh, uh, nice presentation, Kedar. Um, can you tell us uh, from the which device it was captured uh, during your study? Uh, it, it was from the Carla simulator, sir. Okay. Um, have you considering about uh, you know uh, the capturing it from the uh, not using the simulator? Uh, uh, sir. Um, actually, we have uh, used Carla's uh, uh, sensor modules uh, to calculate uh, the shortest uh, path function, sir. It it is uh, necessary for uh, uh, the uh, testing and deploying our algorithms. Uh, what are the methods and materials that you have uh, you have used in your uh, work? Uh, please, can you uh, repeat it, sir? 
what are the different uh, methods that ha you have used in your work? Uh, so um, we have uh, basically used uh, uh, a star algorithm, sir, which uh, which uh, where first we input the start location, sir, and the end location, and from the start location, it will start to calculate uh, the the neighboring. It will fetch the neighboring waypoints, sir. And the it will pick the one which is having the lowest cost to reach the uh, end destination, sir. So uh, uh, it proceeds in a node-based fashion, sir, where uh, you are able to see uh, dot by uh, dot. Those are the waypoints, sir, uh, which it has fetched uh, from the from from the given neighboring waypoints. And then we we pass the control to the car uh, to make it follow that uh, shortest path, sir. It is a node-based approach, uh, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, will it work in real time? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, first, we have tested in Carla. Uh, this is Carla's inbuilt uh, town map, sir. And next, we have tested in real-world map, sir. This is uh, a real-world map of uh, Hubli, sir. Uh, we have extracted it from OSM uh, website. And this map is, when it is converted to road networks, it looks like this in Carla, sir. And next, we have deployed our same okay. algorithm. And uh, you can see uh, this is the start location and this is the end location. And it has successfully calculated the uh, shortest uh, uh, path. And the vehicle can be seen uh, following the waypoints in the real world map itself. Was there any particular reason that you have used the ASTAR algorithm? Uh, I mean, there are plenty of uh, similar types of algorithm that are available, like uh, heuristic. Uh, or even a hill climbing algorithm, steepest ascent hill climbing algorithm. So their Eostar algorithm is there, which you could, you could have considered. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, we we have currently used a star algorithm, uh, but there uh, there are I agree that there are more uh, advanced algorithms like uh, RRT, uh, uh, which we could which uh, uh, we could have used for a more uh, dynamic uh, environment approach uh, in the. We have kept that for the future scope and further studies. Okay, okay. No more questions from my side. We can move on to the next slide. Ayush. Thank you, sir. Moving towards the next presentation. Now I would like to call Mr. Swati Krishna to present her paper on free eclampsia or risk prediction using machine learning algorithm. You may please start your presentation. Okay, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Ah, thank you, sir. Ah. Uh... Good evening to everyone. Uh, is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Uh, uh, can you can you make it full screen, please? Ah, uh, okay, sir. Uh, good evening to all. I'm here to present my research work titled Preeclampsia Risk Prediction Using Machine Learning Algorithms. Uh, basically, preeclampsia is a condition. It is a pathological condition that particularly occurs during pregnancy. Do you, um, particularly, it occurs during trimester of the pregnancy. Pregnancy is associated with a group of physiological and pathological changes. Uh, the major indication of this uh, condition includes a high BP along with elevated blood glucose levels and high levels of protein in urine, which may cause kidney damage. So uh, if this uh, preeclampsia is uh, untreated, it can lead to various fatal complications for both mother and baby. Thus, diagnosing this uh, preeclampsia at an early stage uh, might reduce the complications. So, uh, I have implemented uh, machine learning algorithms on certain features um, such as systolic, diastolic, blood glucose, blood temperature, heart rate to predict the risk of uh, to predict the risk level of uh, preeclampsia and accuracy of the said algorithms for uh, building a better predictor system. Uh, the main objective of my uh, project is uh, to support doctors for uh, 
early patient assessment, treatment planning and recovery care. Uh, the medical counselors uh, said that the doctor must uh, take care of an average of uh, 1,143 patients per year. Thus, uh, the ultimate objective of this research is to develop a predictive model for the risk assessment of pregnancy-induced hypertension using machine learning approach. Uh, this the machine learning has been su successfully applied to medical research to improve the diagnosis and the prediction of complex diseases and syndromes. The following machine learning algorithms I have used are Navy Bias, uh, LR, Rada Boost, KNN, uh, SVM, Decision Tree, and Random Forest. The data set which I have uh, collected was from a public data set, um, which is uh, which I have uh, derived from Kaggle, sir, Community Clinics Maternal Health Care at Oslo University Hospital through the IoT-based risk monitoring system for preeclampsia pre risk prediction. These are the literature survey I have uh, done uh, to implement this project. The existing system, uh, in existing system, they have used many ML-based risk uh, deduction methods, but the research issue was uh, various restrictions where there where the accuracy of the predictive risk system was below ninety percent. Uh, in my work, I have uh, um, used such um, pre-processing method uh, to improve the uh, um, to improve the efficiency of the algorithm such that I have. Uh, gotten an accuracy up to 96.38 uh, percentage, sir. According to findings from similar studies, there is still room for the development of preeclampsia risk reduction using uh, different ML models that can perform better. Drawbacks, um, drawbacks are it doesn't uh, work on um, large number of data sets. No comparison for mentioned ML algorithms. Uh, uh, less prediction accuracy. These are the existing works drawbacks. Uh, I have tried to uh, eradicate these drawbacks in my works. The proposed system include um, a correlation investigation of patients' vital parameters for predicting risk levels ranging low, mid, and high risks. In order to comprehend the significance of the connection between significant features, I have plotted uh, scatter uh, scatter plots and data visualization uh, for, for the important features I have uh, derived from the data set. Um, methodology is the data set consists of risk levels of preeclampsia ranging from low to high among 1,512 uh, pregnancy women delivering in community clinics around Norway. The data set was uh, checked for their cor correlation and was pre-processed by dropping the unwanted columns. Then the important features of the data set was derived for further classification and prediction. Uh, this is the block diagram. First, the maternity risk data is uh, collected. Then the pre-processing of the statistical data is done. Then the selected features are prepared and their features are correlated. Then the model, uh, then uh, the data set uh, is trained using uh, uh, these uh, machine learning models. Then it is tested. Uh, then we can, uh, then uh, the risk prediction can be um, it can be done, sir. This is the histogram of maternity data data sets. Public data set contains a lot of misinformation. So I've used aggregation standardization and smoothing process to drop the unwanted columns. And the correlation matrix uh, is, uh, I've used the correlation matrix to determine the correlation between the features in the maternity data. And the ML models are pre-processed and scaled. Um, I have used a Python scikit learning li uh, library uh, to perform this uh, algorithm. Data visualization. These are the systolic, diastolic, and uh, various data set which are visualized using scatter plots. Then correlation matrix. The age, uh, systolic, BP, diastolic, blood glucose, blood temperature, heart rate are correlated. Um, and their important feature was uh, found to be a uh, blood glucose level. Uh, these features are then trained using uh, Navy Bayer's uh, logistic support vector, KNN, uh, decision tree, Adabust, uh, and random forest. Among this, uh, random forest uh, provided an accuracy up to 96.39 percentage. So the prediction of from the random forest is uh, shown below.
uh, if we enter all these values, uh, it the system will predict uh, whether it is high risk or low risk or mid risk. Uh, confusion matrix for this uh, random forest algorithm. Uh, so I have plotted the true positive and false positive, true negative and false negative. It shows. Sorry for the interruption, ma'am. Uh, but ah. please kindly consider concluding your presentation as you have only one minute remaining. Ah, okay, sir. Uh, then uh, the ROC characteristics, the trade of uh, for true positive and false positive values. I have calculated the ROC value for the high risk, low risk, and mid risk, which is shown in the graph. Um, then the performance matrix, the accuracy, precision, recall, F1, so F1 score, support, uh, and AOC, ROC are uh, plotted. For uh, Navy Bayes, I have obtained an accuracy of 57 and logistic 59, which progresses to random forest providing the highest accuracy among this algorithm 96.39 percentage. Uh, so I've used Python IDLE software to implement this project. Uh, I have also compared the ML model's accuracy uh, based on the performance matrix I have uh, derived uh, random forest. Uh, so conclusion is, um, uh, I have compared the machine learning models. I have the RF algorithm yielded an accuracy rate up to 96.13 percentage, which I, with accurate prediction, this uh, model can be developed into a system, which uh, which can help the doctor to minimize their uh, complications regarding uh, to diagnose the disease, sir. Uh, the references, uh, the data set I uh, use this from Kaggle. Uh, it is a com it is a data set collected from various community hospitals in and around no Norway, Oslo. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um... I have uh, two questions that um, uh, firstly that uh, why you have you have considered the uh, data set from Norway Oslo why uh, not other data sets uh, from sir, other countries um uh, when i have searched uh, for the data set for uh, pregnancy risk prediction uh, in kaggle uh, this is the accurate data set so i have considered using that sir uh, um okay uh, was was it mentioned in the kaggle that uh, it is an accurate data set or uh, was it mentioned in other uh, was that uh, it is not uh, other data set that they have used it is not accurate how can you claim it uh so um so this data set is, uh, has also been used by many researchers in their website i have found they have used this data set and it is accurate so i have used it in my okay okay project. okay uh, one more thing is uh, uh one more thing is that uh, you have used um, ag boost right uh, ada boost yes, yeah yeah ada boost oh, why uh, didn't you consider uh, using xg boost xg boost uh, sir um uh, sir so i uh, i have tried using sir um but um as random forest provided much better than xg i have concluded with the no but RF, exists no exist not mentioned in your paper or not even mentioned in your site that's what i that's why i'm asking because uh, you know sometime exibust uh, may outperform in some other cases oh, that's okay. why i'm asking that why you have used uh, ada boost and not exibust is there any particular reason behind that uh, sir uh, i have i performed using sg sir there is not uh, that much difference uh, in the performance metrics between AB and XG, so I have asked, uh, so I have just uh, ignored the XB and replaced it with AB, then proceeded with RF, sir. Yeah, but whenever you are claiming it, you should mention it in your slide, isn't it? Ah, uh, oh, okay, sir, okay, sir. Okay, okay, uh, okay no sir. problem. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your uh, nice presentation. We can move on to the next one, Ayush, please. Thank you, sir.
moving towards uh, the last sorry presentation to, sorry to interrupt ayush how many presentations are left now uh, it's the last presentation okay okay thank you thank you uh moving towards the last presentation now i would like to call vina lenka to present her paper on the evolution of campus recruitment pattern a novel approach you may please start your presentation good evening everyone am i audible yes you are audible okay let me share my screen i hope my screen is visible my screen yes, is visible, visible. Is, yeah okay. yes it's visible yeah yeah so uh, good evening everyone uh, my presentation is on the uh, evolution of campus recruitment pa uh, patterns a uh, novel approach so uh, this uh, we have three authors me uh, that is uh, reena and then ankita bhatia and uh, brigadier dr rajiv divekar in this so i am presenting the paper so this uh, basically is uh, related to the campus placement where uh, nowadays like you know campus placement not only today but from before also it is a quite a big challenge so uh, many institutes they are also like you know many students approach the institutes because of their placement so that is a very big thing which uh, happens so campus placement is a kind of a thing which actually makes the institute much more branded it brands the institute as well so uh, as you can see i have gone through uh, several review literature where uh, this thing is uh, always done uh, like you know it's a kind of a dilemma which company should be uh, called and which uh, like you know uh, company called and which student should be going for, for the interview so it takes a lot of time so uh, if you see uh, the... uh, sorry to interrupt can you uh, you know uh, make it full screen yeah 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 Uh, just a second sir just give me a moment now is it visible sir it's okay yeah, thank you continue continue yeah yeah so uh, the objective of my study is uh, it is uh, like i have proposed a model where uh, the companies and uh, the students they can come together and uh, like it would be less of a hassle for the uh, organization for the uh, like you know institute to uh, contact the companies the companies would be coming and they get a chunk of students and they get a pool of students where uh, it becomes easy for them to select the students so uh, i'll go to the next one okay so this is the present scenario where the uh, majority of the business they use campus hiring as a significant recruiting channel so that is uh, mainly what is happening like you know through placement recruitment you are uh, recruiting people and companies coming and it's it's just a kind of a thing and then uh, organizations they prepare to conduct a massive campus hiring where it involves uh, financially also it it involves lot of uh, like you know manpower is also required and at the same time it is a kind of a process which which happens and it is also time consuming so and then individuals are uh, then it is a kind of a process which goes on like you know interviews going on uh, candidates coming they are giving interview then that way it goes on now the future scenario i'll go to the next slide future hey, scenario is hey bhaiya jana mausi ke liye chai la de de chalo chai upar ko okay fine so the the future scenario is where uh, like little bit of physical uh, recruitment would be there uh, mostly it would be kind of a virtual thing uh, like is it would be a hybrid mode where campus recruitment can happen without physically coming and you know recruiting the people so that is a kind of a future scenario and it would be adding on to the value of the students as well because a lot of pool of students would be there database would be there companies would be coming and they would be recruiting through online as well and they'll get lots of more uh, people where they can recruit so this is the kind of a future scenario so this is a model which i have proposed where uh, industry and company they are having their database where it is divided into three rounds to wo bhi usko bhi mil jati hai sorry can i continue hello can i continue am i audible mom you can continue yeah 
So uh, this is a kind of a uh, industry and company database where I have category HR team and opening. So in uh, sorry. Yeah, so uh, this category consists of software code management and other technical post, uh, post where the uh, students would uh, love to, uh, like, you know, go for the recruitment and companies, they are posting their job uh, profiles and everything. Then the HR team uh, see, goes through the resume screening, then shortlist the students, then the scheduling interview and they're allotting the interviews and then their post interview screening taking place. Then uh, the students and the or the candidates are getting a uh, know how regarding the job role, the job responsibility, job location, and package. So this is a kind of a, a flow chart where I have given like how this entire process is going on. So this is a specific company or industry. Then they're connecting to the student database. Now the student database is being filtered, and then according to the department and uh, whether it is they are eligible or not eligible rejected then if eligible how what is the percentage of marks and if it is not according to our uh, to the company's requirement then they are rejected if yes they are eligible and this uh, interview is scheduled and date and time is given so this is the summary where uh, there is a job opening in an industry company can access the student database and they can uh, do the profile searching and they can uh, post the requirement to the students. Then uh, the program filters the eligible students because there is a pool of database of the students profile given. So it uh, filters the eligible students through uh, various criteria like, you know, degree specialization, percentage of marks, preferred job location, etc. Then the shortlisted candidates are requested to book a time and frame to attend the online interview. And then the, when the interview process is done and it is completed, the recruiter provides the rating score for the candidate and that that saves the uh, that information saved in the database for future reference of the company of the uh, institute as well as the student. Then after the final interview, the recruiter saves the candidate's rating in the ratings sheet. Depending on that, the HR can go and make the selection. Then the, finally, the company chooses the number of candidates required for the job and from the rank list, and they issue the job offer. After the candidate accepts the job order and confirms, uh, confirms the joining, the company uh, then removes the name of the student who has already been given the job. So this is a kind of an automated process which would be helping the students as well as the company and as well as the institute for a kind of a uh, platform where everything is automated. So this is a kind of thing what I have uh, like, you know, worked upon. So this online recruitment process is going to help uh, everyone uh, in terms of financially, in terms of, you know, time saving, time consuming. Uh, it, it's not a time consuming process. It would be giving everyone a chance to make the right uh, kind of selection. Uh, so this is the, so this is the references, sir. Now, uh, thank you for your presentation. Can you go back to the slide uh, where you have uh, discussed about the proposed model? Yes, sir. This one? Are we talking about this? Or this? Yeah, yeah. This one? Yeah. Have you uh, have you considered about the employee attrition or anything like that? Sorry, sir. I didn't get you. Employee. Uh, employee attrition or something like that in the HR team, under the HR team, uh, you know, uh -huh. the employee uh, mm -hmm. uh, retain, uh, retainment, anything yeah. like that? Yeah, uh, sir, actually, this is the kind of thing which is for, you know, placement thing. So here I haven't considered the uh, attrition of the HR team, but I have a separate uh, model which I have developed which is uh, regarding the attrition, how we can, you know, take care of the attrition and what would be the attrition rate of the, uh, like, you know, uh, HR team uh, or the employees in the organization. So that is a separate one. So, so, separate study. so is it is it included in your study? Sir, uh, this uh, model has been, uh, we are developing it for my institute, I'm developing it. 
and this would be implemented once it is fully complete. It is on the midway, sir. So this would be introduced okay. in my institute. What are so the this would be helping the placement actually, placement team as well as the students for the. Okay, okay, I, I, I got it. Uh, what are the challenges you are facing currently? Challenges, sir, uh, getting hold of, uh, like, you know, the, the first thing what uh, challenge I faced was, like, to uh, get hold of a technical person who would be able to translate this thing into a prototype and convert it into a app type. So that was the first challenge, but then we were able to, since it's a big university, so we were able to find out a person who was able to deliver. And so then, like, you know, I had to sit with him and explain, like, what exactly we want. Then I took help of uh, the placement team also, who are actually dealing with the placement, what all problems they're facing. And then I contacted a few companies through them. So the placement team, so that way. So whatever what the challenges we were facing in an institute. Oh, uh, so let me let me get it right. Uh, uh, currently, you have evaluated uh, through your institute only, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Have you thought about a uh, future scope uh, if you want to deploy it in other yes, institute sir. as yes, well? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, will they, will, what I would will be they accept is, it? Yes. So this, we have done it. And this, once it is implemented in the institute, sir, we would be, you know, testing it, which few of the things we have tested, it has come out positive. Like it has really helped the students as well as the company. They, well, the company has also said that it is actually saving time for them. So once this is done, this would be patented, sir. I will get it patent and then I would be putting it to use in different institutes. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, but yeah. uh, I think first of all, you should, uh, it's, it's uh, significant enough I think you should be copywriting it first, then you yes, should sir. proceed for yes, the patent. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll do yeah. that. I'll do that. Uh, uh, no more questions for the uh, current presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good day, sir. Good day. Thank you so much. Moving towards the closing remarks, I sincerely thank our author for their excellent presentation and contribution in this session, and all our part participants for being a part of this international conference. I hope this session was informative enough. On be behalf of the whole team, I would like to thank you for the support during the 8th version and previous 7th version of the conference. We will be happy to have you in the ninth version in 2024. All the presenters would be getting their digital certificates through email within two working days. Further, all the paper have already forwarded to the Springer and the publication will be live within six months. Kindly cooperate with the team of ICTCS 2023. I also thank our session chair, uh, Professor Chian Chokaburti for uh, chairing the session, a token of appreciation to the chair on behalf of team ICTCS 2023 and Global Knowledge Research Foundation and partners. Thank you for your valuable presence. Uh, I kindly request you all to switch on your camera for a quick snapshot. Again, I request everyone to kindly switch on your camera for a quick snapshot. Thank you so much for your valuable time. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Ayush, can you uh, say a few words? Uh, it's uh, it's like uh, it's a very good thing that we have all uh, come here and have a great presentation. Uh, there is a there is many knowledge which we get from all the presentations. That's all. Thank you. So, would you like to say something about the presentations? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as the session chair, I would like to extend uh, my heartfelt thanks to all of you for being part of a, this enlightening and engaging session. And it has been a privilege to oversee this gathering and brilliant minds uh, thought lead and thought leaders. I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all our esteemed presenters and uh, for sharing their uh, valuable insights and expertise. Your presentation has been thought provoking inspiring and have left us with a wealth of knowledge to ponder upon. 
I would like to thank our organizing committee for meticulous planning and flawless execution of the session. Uh, I'm immensely grateful to all of the attendees for your active participation and enthusiastic engagement. I, I, your presence has been uh, made uh, se this session vibrant. Your contributions have enriched the discussion. Let us carry forward the ideas and inspiration gained from this session and continue to uh, make a positive impact in our respective fields. Wishing you uh, all a wonderful evening ahead. Thank you. Thank you from my side. Your words mean a lot to us, sir. Thank you for your words and your valuable presence. Thank you, Ayush.